you on the whole? I think you all said, wow. So thank you so much um, for choosing this particular school to entrust your education to. Now, I'm going to transition to the Dean's Awards. Um, and it's my honor to um, start off with the Dean's Leadership Award, um, which is going to go to Ms. Olga Waters. Oh, yeah. Olga joined the CUNY School of Medicine faculty in 2016 and is Associate Program Director of the PA um, program. She provides directions, operational oversight, fiscal management, as well as the long-term goals planning for the program. Before joining CUNY Medicine, uh, <laughs> she was a teacher and she was actual practice um, in the specialties of OB-GYN, pediatrics, and emergency medicine from 2007 to 2014. She is a consummate, um, consummate commitment to the underserved, um, was also developed by going to underdeveloping um, countries. Today, Olga, um, her award is gonna be accepted by Tanya Torres. Um, Ms. Waters can't be here with us today um, due to health issues. But I also remember, want you to remember that Olga when we had to have someone step up and provide leadership for this PA program on an interim basis, she did that. And she kept it afloat, she kept us moving forward, and we're deeply thankful. We're gonna roll. It is an honor to receive this award from Dean Green. First, I must recognize the role my late husband played in this award, as I would not be the professional I am today without his love and support. It is with a full sense of purpose that I work alongside the dean, our medical director, the faculty and staff of the Chile School of Medicine PA program, as well as the medical school, adjuncts, and preceptors. It is a privilege to work alongside this amazing group of people towards the goal of making this historic PA program a program of excellence. The collective effort and contribution by so many different individuals makes this award possible and is a recognition of each of you as well. At PA, we are all leaders and healers, as our dean likes to say, and I humbly receive this award and pledge to continue to work hard for our school, our students, our profession, and our patients. Thank you. I'd like to now ask uh, Mr. Adrian Llewellyn, whom you met early at the podium, and our Associate um, Dean for PA Studies, uh, to present the inaugural Annie Brown Distinguished Alumnus Award. Um, this award was, um, the recognition was renamed in honor of her, um, of our last year honoree, and will be named the Annie Brown Award going forth as our distinguished alum. <laughs> Ms. Brown, can you stand up? She, as you uh, mentioned, she was in, a member of the very first class to graduate from our program in 1973. Uh, the Physician Assistant Studies program, as you know, came out of the military. She's only a few years old. So she is a, both a pioneering pioneer in the profession, and I believe probably the first black woman. The picture of her with her, th her three black men it looks like Miss Annie Brown, Gladys Knight, and the Pips, um, and it does. Um, um, and we're just really honored to have you here every year, um, watching over us, Adrian.
Thank you, Dean Green. I am pleased to present this first ever Annie Brown class of 1973 Distinguished Alumnus Award to Dr. Gloria Mabry. She's a clinical, clinical coordinator and distinguished medical lecturer for the physician assistant program. Dr. Mabry manages all aspects of the clinical year and serves as an advisor, mentor, advocate for the students, starting within their first year and continuing until graduation. She works tirelessly through weekdays and weekends to ensure students receive the best clinical experience possible. And I mention weekends because students will reach out when they can, which is often on the weekend. And of course, Dr. Mabry always responds. She engages students to continue, study hard, push themselves, use all the possible resources, and to ultimately, ultimately pass the national licensing boards. Dr. Mabry's unwavering dedication, her professionalism, and commitment to the training of the next generation of physician assistants speaks volumes about the caliber of our graduates that this historical program produces. Dr. Mabry, Mabry you are an inspiration to us all. I feel like I just got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Um, but thank you for bestowing me with such an honor and this special award. PA Annie Brown is who every PA should strive to emulate. In my 38 years as a PA, I am fortunate to have learned so much about work ethic, dedication, and commitment to the communities that we serve. The landscape of Harlem has changed, but the sacrifice and desire to educate and train healthcare providers has remained steady. Thank you, family, friends, colleagues, students for your support. Whether known as the Harlem PA program, the Sophie Davis School of Biomedical Education, and now the CUNY School of Medicine, here's to another 50 years and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian, and congratulations, um, Gloria, and my sorority sister. Um, I am now thrilled to introduce the class of 2024 Student Awards. I will present the Dean's Award and the Dean's Persistence Award, and other esteemed leaders will be introduced to present additional awards. Let's begin with the Dean's Award. Would Sophia Love come to the stage? The Dean's Award is given in recognition of a student's extraordinary accomplishments during their graduate education. Someone who demonstrated scholarly aptitude, pride, resilience, and an unwavering dedication to the mission of the school of eliminating health and health care disparities in our time. Sophia? 
thank you for all of your hard work in inspiring us. Okay, the next award is the Dean's Persistence Award. It is not listed in your program, and that's purposeful. With Salim Sabi. So, so one of the things that um, I take the prerogative of doing is, as we look at the graduates, I get a look at the entire class, and I get to reflect on each student in the class, and I give a special award for those people who pers persevere over the odds and who is inspiration to the rest of the class, as well as to Congratulations. I'd like to ask Adrian Llewellyn to come to this podium to provide the confer the director's award. Thank you again, Dean Green. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored once again to present the next award, the Director's Award. And I would like Ms. Tierra Roy to please join me. This award is in recognition of the students' extraordinary accomplishments during their PA education. Someone who was model student in, in uh, the, the class, well respected by their preceptors, who also meets the mission of our program. Coming from a community that is underrepresented in medicine, knowing firsthand the difference medical care can bring to your community. Please join me in congratulating Tierra Royce for the Director's Award. Thank you, Adrian, Tierra, congratulations. Um, I'd like to ask Tanya Torres to come to the stage. She is our clinical coordinator for the PA program. She's going to confer the didactic award. The next award for the didactic year for academic excellence, the highest GPA which is not a very easy thing to accomplish, goes to Ms. Sophia Love. It is my pleasure now to ask Jesse Soar to the podium.
This is the Clinical Excellence Award. Clinical work is vital and essential to all medical training. It gives students the guidance and opportunity they need to apply what their classroom learning is to the healthcare environment. With this important area of the PA training program, the Clinical Excellence Award is awarded to the student with the highest scores in the preceptor evaluations of PA students. Please join me in congratulating Jesse Soar. Is actually going to present the scientific research and writing certificates. Thank you, Dean Green. With Sinjin Chen, Bria Galston, Carl Virgil Lazaro, and Jennifer Lee, please join me at the podium. Scientific research is integral to the PA medical education program. Scientific understanding and the ability to express and translate scientific phenomena are crucial skills for every medical professional and at all stages of your careers. Sorry. The scientific research and writing certificates are given based on merit and are awarded to the best group presentations during the research methods capstone project. It is our honor to recognize each of you for the outstanding accomplishment. Thanks, Emily. Dr. Green. She's the green with an E on the end of her name, which means her family made more money than mine. Um, I now ask Tia Roy, speaker for the class of 2024, to come to the podium to address her classmates. Tia? Good afternoon, family and friends, esteemed faculty and guests, Dr. Johnson, PA Brown, Dean Llewellyn, and Dean Green, and of course, my fellow graduates. My name is Tiara Roy, PA. <laughs> the C is pending. <laughs> and I am so honored and humbled to stand here today and speak to you all on behalf of my graduating class. So as I look out to all of my beautiful cohort members, all dolled up out of their scrubs with eight plus hours of sleep, I have one question for you guys. Are you guys doing okay? Are you like still alive and standing? Because I feel like I just went through battle. But this was not a battle we could have, sorry, this is not a battle we fought alone. We are standing here today because of our incredible and supportive faculty. We came in here as bright eyed students who were so eager and excited, thinking that the hardest hurdle was getting into PA school. But we had no idea what was coming our way. There's no better feeling than when you hit that 3 a.m. mark in your all-nighter, you're looking at the hundreds of slides you have left to review, and you get the rush of emails from Dr. J with all the motivational quotes and poems. Yeah. <laughs> 
it fills us with so much hope and appreciation when we see that. And a little bit of concern, because I know why we're up at this time, but Dr. J, you need to get some sleep. I mean, <laughs> during a time when exam scores were the biggest worry in our lives, Dr. Wang would give us the much needed reality check that it doesn't matter if it's on the exam or not, you need to know it or your patient will die. So, to our powerhouse clinical team coordinators, thank you for helping us navigate the roller coaster that is rotations and for making sure we had somewhere to be every five weeks. I mean, props to PA Torres. There's only so many unique and interesting case presentations you can sit through and grade. <laughs> and we all know Dr. Mabry needs a vacation after chasing down all our preceptor emails. Don't worry, Ms. Davis Clark, I got you too. If anyone has a Harlem Hospital ID that needs to be returned, please do so at this time. You're not getting your diploma. But all jokes aside, for many of us, this is the first time we are in a learning environment where we are not in the minority and we feel represented by our teachers and mentors. To learn from professors who look like us, who come from the same cultures as us and similar walks of life is truly empowering. And most importantly, to learn from providers who are out serving communities we belong to is a gift that we are forever grateful to this program for. That's the beauty of the CUNY School of Medicine. Now, to my cohort, the class of 2024. You guys are okay, I mean, it's fine, whatever. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. One thing you all need to understand is we are a COVID class. So we started off with all our lectures on Zoom and only meeting in person for exams. That means a lot of us were meeting each other for the first time at our lowest points. But this vulnerability and openness allowed us to create bonds that were crucial to graduating and surviving PA school. <clears throat> From cramming sessions in Harris Hall, which yes, we crammed often, and if you say you didn't, you're lying, to attending Dr. Cashfee's lectures from the bar across the street. It was approved by countries, okay. <laughs> we quickly became a cute little family. Uh, we experienced life together from baby showers, babies, <laughs> engagements, weddings, birthdays, new apartments, traveling around the world, we have created bonds that will last us a lifetime. And despite our crazy academic schedule, we still pushed each other to give back to our community. We taught local students about the PA profession, face painted and taught about hypertension at the local block parties. We took all the donated menstrual products and stuffed it into Gabby's signature Mini Cooper to deliver it around Harlem. We represented our school at state and national conferences and placed second place at the Medical Challenge Bowl. Shout out to Veronica. <clears throat> Through you all, I learned the definition of unity in diversity. So that being said, I have, we have a few words of advice for the class of 26 and 25. Don't worry, farm will be over soon. For rotations, ob -gyne, gowns and shoe covers, very important. Um, internal medicine, get ready for six hour rounds on like electrolytes maybe, I don't know. Um, for ED, the nurses and Dr. Showers are your best friends. And lastly, enjoy this time as a student. Take in every learning opportunity because now is the time to make mistakes and grow from it. Help and uplift each other. The competition ended when you got into school. These are your future colleagues. You worked your whole life for this, so savor every moment before time flies. Soon you also will feel very nostalgic about drawing out the brachial plexus with your study group. Remember, you're not doing this just for the grades or for yourself, but for your future patients, so do them justice. And now some tips for my graduating class. The role of a PA is one of profound responsibility. It requires us to be advocates for our patients, agents of change within the system. So carry this responsibility with pride and enter the next best, next best chapter of your life with full confidence, or as Naomi would say, with the confidence of that six-figure salary. <laughs> as you go forward, keep these next few things in mind. Remember who you are. Carry your unique life stories and lessons into your patient care, because we are that new mom who gave birth right after her ob final and raised her son throughout her rotations. We 
We are the sibling who coached her sister through labor and delivery and came to campus within hours for boards review. We are an immigrant who is starting over in this new country with their family cheering them on from back home and still finding time to teach and tutor others and help them obtain their GED and pass community college. We are, and always will be, that 12-year-old child who went to all the doctor's appointments as the medical advocate for our parents who don't speak English and continue to do so to this day. We are DACA recipients who work so hard to pave our way in this country and are working towards a career in servitude to give back to this amazing country. We are social media influencers who use their platform <laughs> to help thousands and thousands of future PAs and also act as a voice and representation for so many women, especially Muslim hijabi women, hoping to go into medicine. Remember where you came from. I'm fully stealing from a TikTok trend here, but we stand here today because the world did not end when you, we failed that first orgo test, or got that first PA school rejection letter, or changed our career paths entirely. Your failures make you human, and your stories, you should wear them with pride. Remember to be happy. While PA has been our life for so long now, it is not everything. Maintain the relationships that got you here. Keep doing the activities that make you healthy and happy travel, and if you ever feel like you're drowning, reach out for help. And most importantly, remember to stay humble. We are in this profession to serve patients and to help others. We work for our patients. All our actions should carry our patient's safety and well-being as the top priority, not our bosses, not our ego, or our pride. This is, that being said, continue to learn. You guys are looking at a very accomplished and amazing group of individuals who know very little about a lot of things. But that's okay, because this is the start of our learning curve. We only go up from here, so go with humility and grace, because we do this for our patients. I hope you all go into fields of medicine you're passionate and excited about. And if you don't, that's okay, you can change, because we're PAs and we can do that. And on a personal note, I want to thank two influential people in my life, my parents. <clears throat> they immigrated here with nothing but have given me the world. They sacrificed so many of their hopes and dreams to ensure success for me and my sisters. Being their firstborn, navigating the American school system was a learning experience for us all, but they never made me feel limited and always taught me to dream big. And to the most important people in my life, my sisters, Thank you for reminding me of my strengths and weaknesses and why I embarked on this journey. Thank you for always pulling me up when I thought I was drowning. I stand today because you guys are my strength. You taught me unconditional love, and thank you both for being the light at the end of my tunnel. <laughs> I know the sentiment is the same for many of my classmates here who stand on the shoulders of giants. We owe this cap and gown, our stoles, and this diploma to you all. So at this time, again, I would like our family and friends to please take a stand. All our parents, please take a stand. So we can give you all a round of applause and acknowledge you for your hard work that got us here. And to end this speech with a quick quote from someone who has helped me through the toughest of times, through all the long nights of studying and procrastinating, and always made me laugh. In the words of Michael Scott from The Office, may your hats fly as high as your dreams. Congratulations, class of 24, go save some lives.
Okay, wonderful. Nicely done. Um, next, um, I would like to bring the uh, class representative, Shari Malou. And she's going to bestow the class of 2024 faculty awards. Hi, everyone. On the behalf of my cohort, I would like to present to you all our class's chosen outstanding mentor awards for the individual professors and preceptors that made a huge impact on each and every one of us. Please come to the stage and receive your award. The first award I would like to present is to none other than Dr. Joseph. Love you, Dr. J. <laughs> uh, the second award I would like to present is to Dr. Rich. Who I believe is not, unfortunately not here with us today. Our third award I would like to present is to Dr. Trowers. Who is unfortunately also not here with us today. <laughs> There's five, so I'll get through them. The fourth award I would like to present is to Dr. Hubali. <laughs> who also is unfortunately <laughs> not here with us today. And last but not least, the fifth award I would like to present is to Ms. Davis Clark. Thank you all so much on behalf of our cohort of 2024. Thank you and congratulations to all of those who do an extraordinary job of teaching and precepting day in and day out, um, teaching people whether they want to learn or not. How about that? Um, the good news is our folks want to learn. Um, I'm pleased to introduce um, uh, esteemed guest and uh, tremendous colleague. He's our keynote speaker, Dean Robert Johnson. He is, I would call the Dean's Dean. Um, today, as of a couple of years ago, became the longest standing medical school dean in the country. Um, pretty amazing when you consider um, Dean Johnson, when you started, there were no other deans of, of color, African American who started, right? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Um, but he stood the test of time. He's been a as it relates to health equity and justice. Um, even today, we heard him answering some phone calls. We actually made the, um, the invitation at a time such that he actually had to change his clinic. Pretty amazing. He's an expert in um, adolescent health, um, physical and mental health, as well as HIV. Um, violence um, in the adolescent community, as well as um, adolescent sexuality. 
and how do we strengthen families and the communities that are low income and without resources. He has really developed a resilience um, model. He currently serves in the Sharon and Joseph L. Muscarly Endowed Dean, the Professor of Pediatrics and Director of the Division of Adolescence and Young Adult Medicine at Rutgers University, uh, which is the changing the names, Rutgers, New Jersey Medical School. He also chairs the New Jersey Governor's Advisory Committee on HIV and AIDS, the Newark Ryan White Planning Council, and the Board of Deacons um, at Union Baptist Church in Orange, New Jersey. He is a fellow of the American Academy of Pediatric and vice chair of the CDC's um, Community Prevention Task Force. His service to clinical and community medicine also includes leadership roles within the Division of Behavioral and Social Sciences and Education at the National Academies of, of Science. The New Jersey Board of Medical Examiners, the Department of Health and Human Services, um, United States Department of Health and Human Services, Council on Graduate Medical Education, He's also a board member of the National Council of the National Institute of Minority of Mental Health, National Institute of Health and AIDS Research, and the list is on and on. He's also a member of the Institute of Medicine, now known as the National Academy of Medicine, and is on their Health Care Services Board. I am so honored um, to have this man here today. Um, to address um, this distinguished family and, and staff. Um, Dr. Johnson, can you come to the stage, sir? Good afternoon. And um, I want to thank Dean Green and the president of this university, Provost, administration, all of you for inviting me to make a few comments. But before I do that, I want to congratulate all the graduates, all the award winners, and also to thank all the parents and loved ones because it is because of them that you, the graduates of this program, are here today. Now, <clears throat> Since I've been around for so long, I've been uh, in academic medicine for 50 years, a dean for close to now 25 years, and I've had a lot of opportunities to be involved in lots of things. You heard the list from the CDC, the NIH, the National Academy of Science. I've been involved in the regulation of healthcare, development of discoveries involved with many, many of the problems that we have uh, in this country have been involved in developing policy both in this state as well as in New Jersey and as well as on the federal level. So there's lots of stuff I've been involved in. And so it's not unusual for me to be rolled out and asked to pontificate about some of the big issues that we face today, especially big issues that may be faced by graduating classes. You're going to start your careers tomorrow, and you're going to face many of these things. But then when I step back and think about it, I think about all the graduation speeches I've heard. Now, you know, I've been in academic medicine for a long time, so I've sat through hundreds of graduation speeches, and the only ones I remember are the ones that I gave. And so, in thinking about it, I said, well, what's the most important thing I can talk to you about. The most important thing I can talk to you about is you, because your ability to face the big problems you're going to face in your career, the big problems that we have in healthcare in this city, in the state, and nationally, is really dependent on you and what you have inside of yourself and what you can bring to these struggles. It's not going to be a result of great speeches that you give. 
nor will it be the result of great treatises that you write. It will be what you do day to day. You heard Dr. Green refer to the fact that I still see patients. It's very unusual for a dean of a medical school to still see patients. I see patients three days a week. And today, even when I was talking to Dr. Green in her office, one of my patients called me and I had to talk to him about his low blood sugar. And the thousands of patients I've seen in my career, and hopefully the thousands more I'll be able to see if God gives me 77 more years to live, that's going to be the contribution I make. So in thinking about what I would say to you today, I thought I'd talk, talk to you about the things that I've learned about me as a result of the experiences I've had in my life. And so actually I'm going to mention five things, just five things. One of the things is seminal moments. The next is serendipity. The third is the power of yes. The fourth is striving. And the final one is love your life. Now, seminal moments first. And the Latin origin of seminal moments is semen, the Latin word for seed. One of the things that I did when I was in school, I grew up in White Plains, New York, and never, when I told people in 1960, so I wanted to be a doctor, they said, you have to study Latin. So I studied Latin for five years and Greek for one year. Nobody speaks Latin anymore. And then when I went to college, I studied German for two years, and I never studied Spanish, and that was the language I needed to really learn. But I can always pull out the Latin root for all these words. And seminal means the seed. And it is the beginning of something. It is the origin of something. And each of us in our lives will have these moments when something will happen, and in retrospect, we'll realize that, God, you know, that was a real important thing. And so one of the seminal moments I want to tell you about, and you probably have had many in your life too, but one of the seminal moments occurred in 1968. I was a freshman in medical school, and I went to medical school at what was then called the College of Medicine and Dentistry in New Jersey. It was in Jersey City. The buildings are still there, and our lecture halls looked out on New York Harbor. In fact, one of the things I really remember about school is when one of the professors was giving a lecture on biochemistry, we were able to look out at New York Harbor and see the QE2 making its maiden voyage into New York Harbor with all sorts of fireworks and stuff like that. And the professor got very upset because everyone ran over to the window and looked at the ship coming into New York Harbor. Now, those of you who remember, there used to be big ships that came into the harbor down the road there. But they don't, they don't anymore. But th this moment, 1968, was actually my first lecture in medical school. And the professor of anatomy, Dr. Richard Snell, gave a lecture on serendipity. I had never heard that word before. And he said that in your life, you will have many, many plans and all of you probably have plans. You have designs on what you're going to do tomorrow and what your career is going to look like. But there will be things that will happen that will cause you to look up and change your mind. And those serendipitous moments will challenge you. You could say, no, I'm afraid of all that. I have my plans already made, and I'm not going to take a chance that something else will present itself and I may go in a different direction. As I look back on my 50 years, I can find many, many moments where I took a chance on the serendipitous events that occurred. I went to medical school to be an orthopedic surgeon and study surgery, and be involved in sports medicine. But I ended up in adolescent medicine through a number of events that just sort of took me down the road. There were diseases that I 
saw, and I'll tell you about a few of them later, that were, again, serendipitous events. And so serendipity is something you always need to have your mind open to and open to the fact that maybe the thing you decided you wanted to do is different than the plan for your life. Now, for me, it's God's plan, and I know that I will follow that way. But it may be some other event that takes you there. So that's serendipity. In order for serendipity to work, however, you have to respond to the power of yes. When I finished training in pediatrics, I went to NYU, and I was a fellow in adolescent medicine at Bellevue. <clears throat> that was in the early 70s. And while I was there, a group of us who were also at NYU, some people in the law school, the medical school, the school of social work, got together and we decided that we wanted to do something for the youth in New York City. Now, back in those days, there were many young people who were homeless on the streets of New York who hang around, hung around by the docks for right? and, and who got into a lot of trouble, got a lot of illnesses, and we felt that we wanted to do something for them. And so we came together and decided we'd develop a multi-service clinic for them. We called it The Door. The Door was first on 5th Avenue and 12th Street. It is now on Broom Street at 6th Avenue, and it's still there more than 50 years later. And I saw patients there from the middle 70s all the way up to the COVID pandemic. And it was a very important part of my life. One year, and this was in the 80s, a young man named Jamal came in to see me for care at the door. And he was um, a very well-built model, and he was uh, very happy because he'd gotten his first big assignment, and that was to appear on the cover of Time magazine. And he bought in the magazine and says, here, and we, we use first names at the door, so says, here, Dr. Bob, look at this. I'm on the cover of Time magazine. It was just wonderful. I felt very, very happy for him. He came back a month later, <clears throat> and Jamal, who was close to 200 pounds, was suddenly 120 pounds. And he told me that he had a fever, diarrhea, losing weight, and he couldn't figure out what was going wrong. So I, I was a very highly trained physician, and I figured I could figure this out and solve this problem. But I didn't. And in two weeks, Jamal was dead. None of us knew what was happening in New York City at that time. It was happening all over this city, Newark, San Francisco, all over the country, and of course that was HIV infection. And so, it was a challenge for me. I could step back and say, this doesn't fit into the knowledge I know about medicine, and I can't do anything about it, and I won't get involved. Or I could step up and say, yes, I will. I will take on the challenge of trying to figure out what this is and trying to figure out how to resolve it. And that's what I did. I became involved in HIV research. I became first involved in trying to figure out what it was. By that time, I was also a faculty member at New Jersey Medical School. We were and we joined with many, many other scientists around the country who looked into this, looked into developing new treatment programs, looked into developing ways of trying to figure out whether the disease was how to find people who had it, looked into develop ways of getting treatments to people, finding individuals, developing health care systems to provide care for individuals with HIV. And in 25 years, we went from an illness that was a death sentence to an illness that's now a chronic illness that can be handled pretty well. But it was because of yes. Now, yes is risky. You could fail. You could step out there and step up and say something, and everyone laughs at you. I know that. One of the things that happened to me with HIV, I proposed that we choose to treat people as soon as we got the, as soon as we had the diagnosis, rather than waiting. There was a big debate over that, but I persisted, and that's how we do things today. 
when you fail, the only thing that's happened is you found out what doesn't work. And that's a very important piece of knowledge because it takes you to the next step. So never be afraid of failing. Always embrace yes in whatever it is you do. And don't be afraid to go forward. Now, number four on the list, driving. When I was a, a kid growing up in White Plains, one of the things that, you know, like I said, I was in the church, so every summer, a group of us used to go to Richmond, Virginia, to um, Virginia Union University, and uh, to the Lot Carey Baptist Youth Retreat. I don't remember a thing about what happened during that time, but I do remember that outside the cafeteria where we ate was a big stone. And on that stone, there was a carving that said, good, better, best, never let it rest until your good is better and your better best. And that stuck in my head and sticks in my heart today. That every time I do something, I have to do it the best that I can. There can be no room for mediocrity. Now, that may mean that as simple as staying late to see all your patients. It may mean you make sure you all your charts are finished. It may mean that you um, outshine everybody, but it means that you put your whole heart into it and never give up and always strive for the best in everything that you do. Finally, love your life. Now, I'm often asked, how do I do all the things that I do? Like, you know, run the medical school. At one point, I was at, being at two medical schools. I see patients. We still have the adolescent division. We're still um, involved in research. And I have a lot of other things I do as well. And I get up every morning happy that I'm awake. Well, when you're 77, you always get up happy that you're awake. But I look forward to everything that I do. And some people say, well, when are you going to retire? When are you going to stop doing this? And I say, I cannot retire since I love it so much. I get paid to do something that gives me great joy. And that's something you need to strive for. The prestige of our profession is important. The things that we're able to do for the people of the world are important. The money is nice. But the joy, the joy that comes from the satisfaction that you'll get, the joy that comes from all your interactions is priceless. And without that joy, you won't be able to have great health. Without the joy, you won't be able to be able to move forward. So make sure that whatever miss you achieve in your profession, that it is one where your joy is the most important thing, not the prestige and not the money. So those are the five things that I want to leave with you. And I graduates, I hope that at least one of them has made an impact on you. I wish you congratulations again and great success in your career. Congratulations. amazing man. Ah. You bring tear smiles, right? <laughs> um, you know, it's, I hope you realize that you're watching a history maker. A small token of our appreciation and acknowledgement of your leadership. Um, we give you the CUNY 
Arts Dean's Social Mission Award. Um, it is the highest award that we give. And so thank you so much. Thank you. We're getting there. Um, someone turned me upside down. So, we're getting ready to begin the hooding ceremony. Um, the hooding ceremony is a special recognition ceremony for graduate degree candidates. It marks a rite of passage into the graduate's um, careers as physician assistants. Hooders include members of our PA and medical school faculty, as well as two distinguished alumni um, who are medical professionals who will assist uh, family members with their hoods. I remind you, family, this is an exciting time, but we'll have you stay behind the little marked, little banded off areas um, for safety. We are going to get lots and lots of pictures, and you can have as many of them as you want. Um, a hooder will place the hood over the graduate's head to signify that they have successfully completed the MS and Physician Assistant Studies program. Gloria Mabry and uh, Tanya, Dr. Mabry and Tanya Torres will call the names of the graduates as they present themselves for hooding. Dr. Green, are the master's candidates ready to be presented for um, hooding? Dr. Mabry and Tanya Torres, will you call off their names? Jaritza Burgos. Sin Jin Olivia Chang. <laughs> Shy Ann Kling Scales. Jennifer De Leon Encarnacion. <laughs> Tiffany Yip. Edwin Escobar. Rosa Espinales.
Ruyer Galston. Jennifer Gomez. <laughs> Tanise Kafaru. Dinara Kashimova. Carl Virgil Lazaro. Not with us today, but we are also honoring Ms. Jennifer Lee Kwa. <laughs> Sophia Love. Also not with us today, but we are honoring Shelly Machado. <laughs> Ms. Veronica Martinez Vargas. Latifa Melville. <laughs> Naomi Mitchell. Shari Mohammed. <laughs> Tiara Roy. Not with us, but honoring A Be Na Sa. Salim Sabi. Jesse Soar. Adriana Stosic.
Gabriela Susana. Chisa Tanvir. Valeria Torres Rivera. Teddy Yu Zan Marie. Mildred Bill. <laughs> Michelle Wahidi. Gavin Wu. Okay. Oh, you got it. Okay. And now, uh, the moment you've all been waiting for, um, by the power invested in me in the New York State Department of Education, the CUNY Board of Trustees, and your esteemed faculty, I confer the degree of Master of Science and Physician Assistant Studies to the class of 2024. Before we um, do the oath and the alumni greeting, I'd like for you to stand up, turn around, show your people that you're now a full physician assistant. Exhale. Um, graduates, um, you're now part of the CUNY Medicine Alumni Community. And it's my pleasure to ask Dr. Mabry um, to come to the podium, ably assisted by uh, Ms. Annie Brown. 
to welcome you to the profession. Congratulations. As, a, as an alumna of the CUNY School of Medicine, I am honored to welcome you to the ranks of more than 1,000 PA graduates who commit their compassion, expertise, and many talents to their patients, their communities, and to our school. I'm always here for you and hope you will keep in touch as your journey unfolds. So next, um, thank you, um, Gloria, I'm, and thank you for your service, and Ms. Annie Brown. Um, I'm going to have you all stand for the physician assistant oath. Ms. You guys be so we we got last night in the pits again. Okay, great. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we're um, going to... And any other person who um, has, um, wants to renew their oath as a health professional. We're going to uh, follow the oath, and you're going to read it out loud. And this is a very serious oath because we take this 100% serious. Okay. I pledge... To, to perform, perform. Read, read along with us, uh, folks. <laughs> read along with us. I pledge, I pledge to, perform to perform the following duties with honesty and dedication. I will hold as my primary responsibility the health, safety, welfare, and dignity of all human beings. I will uphold the tenets of patient autonomy, beneficence, non beneficence and justice. I recognize and promote the value of diversity. I will treat equally all persons who seek my care. I will hold in confidence the information shared in the course of practicing medicine. I will assess my personal capabilities and limitations, striving always to improve my medical practice. I will actively seek to expand my knowledge and skills and even the rest of the advances in medicine. I will work with other members of the healthcare team to provide compassionate and effective care of patients. I will use my knowledge and experience to contribute to an improved community. I will respect my professional relationship with the physician. I will respect These duties are pledged with sincerity and upon my honor. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you all. Um, as we conclude this wonderful event, um, I would like us to remember that the ground we walk on today was the traditional territory of the Lenape people. In that spirit, let us affirm the aspiration of the great Lenape chief, Tamand, that there be harmony, harmony between the indigenous people of this land and the descendants of the immigrants to this land as long as the rivers and creeks flow and the sun, moon, and stars shine. These are words to remember and to live by today and every day. Good people, the 2024 physician assistant commencement has come to an end. As we begin the recessional, I ask that all guests remain in your seats until the Dean's platform party, faculty, students, and alumni have left the hall. The graduates will then return with me um, for class picture, and afterwards I hope you will join us at the back of the Great Hall for reception. Um, now, the big question is, um, how do we get out of here? 
What was that? you feel I 
what you want. Things coming up, faces, faces. 
Excuse me, graduates and uh, families, but I was just told that if you are interested in a professional photo, please go to room 207 for professional photos from the photographer, family, friends, and graduates. You can go to room 207.